Hello, and welcome to Pilgrimage in Faith, a Lenten journey with the First Baptist Church of Medford, Massachusetts. Each week of this pilgrimage, we will reflect on a different aspect of our faith journey, preparing our hearts in this holy season of Lent for the joy and celebration that await us in Easter. But we are not at Easter yet. There are still days to wait, prayers to pray, and miles to walk. This is a time of preparation. Before we welcome our special guest teacher today, I invite you to pray aloud with me the words of Psalm 130. As we do, we will also hear a musical reflection on this ancient and holy prayer. May your pilgrimage in faith this Lent be a blessing to you. And as we walk together, may you find the strength to be a blessing to others. We pray now the words of Psalm 130. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, Lord, who could stand? But there is forgiveness with you, so that you may be revered. I wait for the Lord. My soul waits, and in his word I hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than those who watch for the morning, more than those who watch for the morning. O Israel, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love, and with him is great power to redeem. It is he who will redeem Israel from all its iniquities. Welcome. My name is Pastor Gregory Sackle. I'm an affiliate pastor at First Baptist Medford, and I'm pleased to have this opportunity to contribute to our Lenten meditation series. Today, I'm going to talk about getting stuck. With all the recent snow and ice storms coming every other day, it seems, what comes to mind is getting stuck in the snow or having the plow come by right after you've shoveled your car out of an on-street parking space, perhaps. But what I'm really wanting to speak about is a different kind of stuckness, if you will. Getting stuck in our lives, getting stuck in stale thinking, getting stuck in outdated ideas. We might be stuck in our way of thinking about other people, especially those who differ from us in distinctive ways. People of different skin tones than our own, for example, or people of different faith traditions or no faith tradition as the case may be. We might have perceptions of friends and family members that are frozen in time, not up to date with where those folks in our lives might be right now, but stuck back in time as a result of things that may have taken place years ago. We might get caught in old ways of looking at and understanding our Christian faith. We might even get stuck in how we see and understand ourselves. We can become fixated on an old version of ourselves, for example, instead of accepting the person we have become now, right now, in the present. In fact, getting stuck in any of these ways is often a result of events that have gotten caught in our minds and our hearts from which we have found it difficult to move forward. Often some of these ideas and understanding served a very useful purpose at one time in our lives. Maybe we found ourselves in a truly challenging set of circumstances from which we rescued ourselves by shutting off a difficult event or memory. Perhaps the only way we were able to make it to where we are now has been by ignoring emotional pain and injury that we may have sustained earlier in our lives. We might be clinging to an outdated belief system that at one time got us through, but is now an obstacle in our path. Any or all of these things can make it difficult for us to acknowledge to ourselves and to others when we've been wrong about something. Let me illustrate. One of my favorite comic strips was Peanuts, drawn by Charles M. Schultz. Now, this particular example that I'm about to show you is from 1960. Unlike a lot of other comic strip artists, Mr. Schultz insisted that upon his retirement in 1999, no one else would be permitted to continue drawing it. And I need to note before I click the share button here that I'm sharing this in this presentation with permission of the copyright holder. So give me a moment here. Here we have uh, two of the most famous characters from Peanuts. We have 
Linus, the little boy who usually carries a blanket. He doesn't have a blanket with him now. Um, and his older, loudmouth, I'm never wrong sister, Lucy. And they're walking along and Lucy says, well, look here, a big yellow butterfly. It's unusual this time of, of year, unless of course he flew up from Brazil. I'll bet that's it. They do that sometimes, you know, they fly up from Brazil and they, and Linus gets down and takes a close look and he says, this is no butterfly. This is a potato chip. Well, I'll be, says Lucy, so it is. I wonder how a potato chip got all the way up here from Brazil. This is a rather lighthearted example of what happens when we are reluctant to let go of an idea, even when our thinking is clearly wrong. It's not only wrong in that moment, but it affects all our thinking going forward. Getting stuck like this can have some serious consequences for us. Now I'm gonna share a photo I have here of, um, I guess I would have to call them two unfortunate maple trees. You can see these trees had the misfortune to take root between um, our fence and um, of our, my building's fence and the fence belonging to our neighbors in the back. And note they, um, they, uh, they're lovely trees. They provide shade and cover during the summer, but they've had to grow in this very distorted way, accommodating their trunks to the fence, so much so that they are actually growing into the fence, as you can see. The same thing can happen to us when we get stuck um, in an old idea or an old understanding. Our uh, perceptions of the world around us, our perceptions of others, of ourselves can become distorted because of ideas and concepts that we have been reluctant to let go of. We continue to move forward in time, but the constraints we've placed in ourselves by our unwillingness to let go of outdated ideas can affect our lives in so many ways. Such ideas may have served a useful purpose at one time in our lives, but now they're simply baggage that we're lugging around without even realizing it. The season of Lent is a good time, I think, for us to get straight with ourselves, to fearlessly examine our lives, our relationships, our behavior, all with an eye towards making sure that these things are based on present circumstances and events rather than things that happened a long time ago. Of course, all of us are a product of where we've been, what we've done, and what we've learned. All of us have hit walls at one time or another as we've tried to find our way. I once said to a younger friend of mine who thanked me for, for some advice I gave him, I said, if a lifetime of wrong turns and bad decisions can help you, well, here I am, just ask. The first step towards moving away from our uh, stuckness, if you will, our stuck state is a willingness to acknowledge it, a willingness to be totally honest with ourselves. Lucy, for example, in our comic strip, Lucy needs to let go of her uh, came up here from Brazil notion and just accept that the thing on the ground is a potato chip that dropped out of someone's lunchbox and nothing more. What are the things in our own lives that we might wanna let go of? Ghosts from the past, like crushing disappointments or failures, real or perceived, destructive behavior on our part or someone else's. I invite you to take some time to reflect with love and compassion on those thoughts and beliefs and points of view that might have at one time served a useful purpose, but are now well past their expiration dates. You know, Jesus tells us over and over again, don't be afraid. And in saying that, Jesus doesn't mean that nothing bad will ever happen to us or that we will never face challenging times in our lives. He means that no matter what happens, he will be with us to see us through. He will sustain and nurture us through come what may. As the author Annie Lamott once said, God loves us just the way we are, and too much to let us stay that way. She also said this, your problem is how you are going to spend this one odd and precious life you have been issued, whether you're going to spend it trying to look good and creating the illusion that you have power over people and circumstances, or whether you're going to taste it, enjoy it, and find out the truth about who you are, end of quote. Well, that's our task in a nutshell. Getting ourselves unstuck gives us the chance to face ourselves fully and fearlessly and honestly and with compassion. 
Lent provides the opportunity to free ourselves from those attitudes and ideas that might have at one time served a useful purpose in our lives, but are now obstacles. Letting go of these things clears the way for us to have a fuller understanding of Christ, to be of greater service to Christ as we work to serve others in this world of ours that needs every bit of grace and compassion that we can muster. At the end of our Lenten journey lies the empty tomb the empty tomb that frees us forever from the fear of death and opens the way to us for life everlasting. Getting ourselves unstuck, that is letting go of those things in our hearts that we no longer need, gives us the opportunity to live into that glorious promise in the here and now, right now. And right now, during Lent, is as good a time and place as any I can think of for us to begin. So signing off for now and wishing you every blessing on your Lenten journey. This is Pastor Greg saying goodbye and I hope to see you in church.